Okay, so today's class is mainly about exponents and um, radicals, actually. So we're going to be doing a lot of stuff with that. So we're going to start with a little bit of review. So you guys can actually finish those off because you know what those mean. What? Keep eating them. I don't want to take those home. I love a lot. But I am. Marcella, you got this down? So remember, the exponent says how many times we're multiplying it by itself. So nice. <laughs> what? Nobody's here. No, it's not nice. That is. All right. So, <laughs> guys. So, how do we feel about this stuff? We we remember this. The the little number tells us how many times we have that base multiplied by itself. So, if I want to undo them, that's where radical co radicals come in. So, if I have four and I square root it, what's it going to be? Two. Two. And could it be negative 2? Uh, yeah. Yes, it could. So this is plus or minus 2. Now, if I want to undo cubing, you put a little 3 out there. So it's essentially saying what times itself 3 times gives me 8. And this one it does have to be a positive 2, because if we had negative, it would be negative 8 in there. Sorry, I was looking at the And the rest of these are very similar. If I want to undo putting it to the fourth power, you just got a little four out there, and it's asking you, okay, what times itself four times gives you 16? Two. Two. And this one actually could be positive or negative two, because if I have a negative two times a negative two times a negative two times a negative two, all those negatives will cancel out to be positive. So this one can be positive or negative. Same thing this this last one. What times itself five times gives me thirty-two, and this one actually has to be a positive two. So if it's a even number, it can be plus or minus. If it's an odd number, it has to be regular. Unless you had something like, oh, oops. Unless it was a negative thirty-two. So what times itself five times gives you a negative thirty-two? That would actually be a negative two. How, how do we how do we feel about these guys? These higher powers? Not too bad. Um, it's not too bad. Like once you see it, it's just a, a, it tends to scare a lot of people. Okay. Um, if you don't already, get out your calculator or slash your laptop. I get some. Sure, we're after school. Can I erase the stuff that's on the board? So just get some practice so that we know how to use our calculators. Go ahead and try these. So obviously these are not ones that you should know off the top of your head. You need to know how to use your calculator. 
So, so actually do these. Actually make sure you know how to use your calculator with these. Maybe you teach us how to do the first one, like in the beginning of the year? Probably. So with this first one, you would put into your calculator 5.2, and then some of you have that little carrot button, or it'll be like Y to an X sort of button, and then that's when you put in 3. So if you're not sure you're doing it right, practice with something you do know the answer to, and then check, and then you can check that you're doing it correctly, because every calculator's different. Oh, my pang is here. I said it. Is that 5.2 or is that attempted 5 times 2? It's 5.2. Oh! Okay. Let me know if you're not sure how to put these into your calculator. No, because it looks like that's only that's only square rooting. So you might need to open up the web page that has a more. Yes. Yeah. So can this my other one? And then you put in the three. Central Army Theater Vampers. Vamp. Well, check and report in five minutes. If you would like to. On a line, you can measure 180 degrees. Yes. Does a ray have a degree measurement? Well, I mean, technically, if you're measuring along that ray, because it is a straight line. But you don't have anything behind it. But you don't have anything behind it. So, no, you technically have a um, 360 degrees off of it, so you, around to the other side. So there is no, like, if you did another ray. If you, you did could, another you ray, then you can angle. measure the right. internal and external angles. But you really can't oh. have a measurement of 180 degrees or 360 on a ray. Well, it depends on like where you're specifically measuring from. So, like if if you have a ray, but I'm measuring from like here to here, you can have your 180 there. But off the the end, no, there's nothing really there. You can't say that a ray has 180 degrees. Like you can say a line by definition is 180 degrees. Well, I think you still you still can because the ray is straight. So the ray itself has a measurement of 180 degrees. But if you started right here at the beginning of the ray, right, but you can't turn 180 degrees. No. Because that, that was a question one of the kids asked me. It's like, but I get, but I mean, technically, you can always kind of extend out. Visually, you could apply those things yeah. on a line to it, but. Technically, I'm th I'm, I'm, I am was trying to argue that I don't think you can because you don't have anything behind you from which to measure two. The thing is, though, I don't see how this would be applied anywhere. Well, I don't either, but it's just one of those questions that the kids ask. I'm like, well, yeah. I don't know. Probably somewhere in physics they do. All right, anyone else not know how to use their calculators? Um, I'm trying to figure out how to do number two. Okay, so let's see. We need to do... Try using... Let's see what number she gets in the number yes. one or not. 37. See, yours might need to be shift. Oh, yours is probably. Oh, okay, I think yours you have to put in the exponent first. So you put in four and then that and then thirty-seven. Yeah, it does the same time zero. What? For me, it's Wait a second, how did I get two for two day? And you got duplicate yeah. Because I think yours is trying to do four times. Yeah. Oh. So you need to make sure you're not just hitting the square root sign, that it's a square root with like a little X. Oh. So a lot of you, it'll say something like, do that. like this. You need to make sure you're hitting that sign, not the regular square root sign. So remember, like practice with something you know what the answer is to, and then then you can try ones that you don't. I'm cool. Anyone else not know how to use their calculator?
And if you don't have a real calculator by now, you'll need one in high school. I have one. Is that good enough? No. All right, we need to keep going. So who's got the answer for me for this first one? Dan. No, Dan doesn't. Okay, who does? Lily. Six oh eight. Is that about what everyone else got? Yeah. Okay. What's our second one? Oh. Bang. Start. Start again. What? Four point three. That. What? Remember, we're doing what? so. Oh, I got that. That that doesn't sound right because we're asking for what number times itself four times because it's a thirty-seven. So it would be. That that definitely can't be right. Two point four six six three two five seven one five. Wait, did you say cool. six six six? So we got no. two point four stuff. Six, Jared, remember I can kick you out. So that so remember, always check what your answer is to make sure it makes sense. Does it make sense that I'm multiplying about two point five times itself four times, getting up to thirty seven? You can always try it out, and if you're getting pretty close, it's probably fine. Then we're asking what times itself five times gives us a fifty a negative fifty two. Negative 2.203 times. 203 stuff. Okay. So remember, because it is a, um, an odd number, we can't have that negative. Because a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative, you have that one left over leaving it negative. How do we feel with this stuff? I don't know how to put it in my calculator. Oh, I do. OK. So. If you're next to that person who doesn't know how, help them. This, this looks just like the no, you're supposed to do it to where the x is higher. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. 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 Oh, actually, I want to teach something before I get here. We'll get there in a second. So you guys are probably using the wrong button. You guys are using that one, right? That's what he was using. That's I only was, a square yeah. root. Yeah. So, so the there's, there's so many things on here. I know. Mm. Oh. Honestly, if not, I'm about to teach you a, a short head. Oh, goddamn it. Watch the language, young man. Jeez. Okay. Eyes up here. Yeah, I don't see it. Let me think of something else. That's a big number. Square root 16 is 4. Okay. Okay. I see the square root, but. So. Oh. Using your calculators or your brains, what's the square root of 16? Four. 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 Try this in your calculator. Put in 16 to a one-half power. Is that four just next to us? Or is that? Try it out. 16, put 16 into your calculators to a one-half power. How do I do a one-half power? Point five. I think I solved your problem. What is this? HP, HP, oh, and you get four. Is that just another version of square root? It's exactly. These are the same thing. Okay. And the same thing. So try try this one at the bottom. So the fourth root of sixteen is two. So try putting in sixteen to the one fourth power or point twenty five. Well, 
Actually, one above, couldn't that be two or negative two? Yeah. What are we getting for this last one? Two. It's also two. So if for some reason you can't find the button on your calculator that lets you do this, you can do this. Ooh. It's the same thing. 16 to the 1 fourth power is the same as um, 4 um, radicalizing the 16. And same thing, square rooting 16 is the same as 16 to the 1 half power. Mm -hmm. That's going to be an issue. Um, do you have a laptop with you? It's it's clocked. Okay. Um, you can use. Actually, you can just use my calculator today. Okay. How do we feel with this this weird stuff right here? Uh, it makes sense because um, okay. So would you like if it was like three above the. Yeah, would you put like a third? So yeah, whatever's inside, I don't know, maybe this is 72, then we can do 72 to the one third power. And if it was like a six, it would be 72 to the one third. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, what, whatever, whatever's there, I don't know, like 57, you, it's going to be to the one fifty seventh power. <laughs> All right, so that's a little, that's a little shortcut. That, so now you guys know that those could essentially go back and forth. So how many of you remember the classification of numbers? Because it's so interesting. The fact that there's whole numbers, and there's integers, and there's rational numbers, and there's irrational numbers, and then all of that's under this whole little thing of real numbers. You guys kind of remember that? OK. If not, we're actually getting there in the, in the very last unit. We're going to get to rational numbers. Now, people always ask, why do we even need to classify things as real numbers? Isn't every number real? No, they're not. <laughs> so, square root of 4 can be what? 2. 2 or positive or negative 2. Okay? Because if we took positive 2 times itself, that's a positive 4. If we take a negative 2 times itself, that's also a positive 4. But what number can you multiply by itself that gives you a negative? Nothing. Nothing. So you have this thing. There are such things as imaginary numbers. So that's why we can classify some things as real, and there are some things that are actually imaginary. They are actually not real. So this one, the way you would solve this is it's still plus or minus 2 with a little i to show there's also a little imaginary friend there with him. Is the imaginary number the actual proper term for it? Yeah. That's, that's why the symbol for it is an i. So the definition of that i, I'll write this over here. That definition of that i, what imaginary number is, is the square root of negative 1. Because it can't exist. There is nothing that you can square root as a negative one. There's no two numbers you can multiply together to get to a negative one. So this is the definition of an imaginary number. Or an i. Yeah. And you always show that with a little i. You don't have to have, like write it like that. I just do so I don't confuse it with my other numbers. I was I was uh, shadowing at uh, Credo in. Uh, uh, Rohnert Park, and um, they were having a algebra two uh, algebra two class, and they were talking about the imaginary number and how they use it in the equations. You do, so imaginary numbers are actually useful. Um, you can actually use them. So let's let's set this aside for now, and I'll come back to him. We'll put him in a box, and we'll come back to our imaginary friend. What wait, what friend? Our imaginary friend. I don't see it. That's the thing. You can't see that. So. 
Now let's go into if we're multiplying radicals. We've done, we've done addition and we've done subtraction and how you essentially kind of treat them like they're variables. Now, when I have two numbers multiplying by themselves, I can simplify it as it's being squared, right? Yeah. yeah. So this essentially is square root of 2 being squared. Now, square rooting and squaring are complete opposite operations, so they actually cancel each other out. So if you square a square root, they go away. They just go away. No, the answer would be 2. Oh. That 2 is free now. It was being squared, or was being square rooted, then we squared him, so that took away all the operations on him, and now he's free to just be a 2. So, same thing, if I have a square root of 3 times a square root of 3, that's just going to be 3. Pretty simple. What do you mean? Oh, cube root? Yeah. So if we had um, a cube root, you'd have to multiply it three times to get it to be free. Oh. I'm going to come back to our imaginary friend now. This, and this actually technically is something you don't need to know yet, but while we're on the topic, I kind of want to just tell you about it. So what if I had then negative 1 times your negative, the square root of negative 1? What's that going to be? Negative 1. So an i times an i gives you a negative 1. So that's one of the ways that you can use. So you guys don't actually have to know this stuff, but I just want to show you that you can use imaginary numbers. So an i cubed then, because you, you'll still have, it would be like a negative 1, but you still have that square root of negative 1. Because you'd need another one to get rid of him. So like an i to a fourth power will actually be a positive 1, because you have two negative ones. But again, you, if this doesn't make sense, don't worry. You don't actually need to know this right now. You'll find this out in, in algebra 2. But you do need to know how to do this. Can I erase all our imaginary stuff? Okay. I don't see it anymore. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to go over how to get rid of radicals in a denominator. Just like when we were learning about exponents, it's Bad form to leave, how it was bad form to leave negative um, exponents. Um, you always made them positive. And there was a rule, to, like a way to get rid of them. Same thing here. It's a bad form to leave a radical in the denominator. So I'm going to show you how to move them essentially. And it's actually pretty simple. So just like whenever we're wanting to manipulate fractions, you can always multiply them by something that top and bottom equals out to be 1. Right? Like if I have, I don't know, two thirds and I want to change this, it, as long as I multiply it by something that equals one, I'm not actually changing it. It's equivalent. You guys remember that? No. Yeah, so as long as I'm multiplying it by something that equals one, I'm, I'm not actually changing the number. I'm actually just changing the form. So, same thing here. I want to get rid of the fact that I have a square root on the bottom. Well, we just learned that, hey, if I multiply a square root by itself, then it becomes positive. It becomes essentially without that square root. So I'm going to multiply it by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. Because that equals 1. So I'm not changing anything. So I'm allowed to do that. So that equals 1. And what you end up with is you have that square root of 2 on the top now, but these become so now it's okay. I don't have that radical in the bottom anymore. It's, and on, the top. it's on the top now, and we're okay. So why don't you guys try that one? One over the square root of three. Go ahead and try that one. Okay, 
No, an imaginary friend, but I'll take both. <laughs> then you'll finally have a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what should I multiply him by? We multiply by square root of 3 over square root of 3, because we're allowed to. That equals 1, so we're not actually changing anything. We get square root of 3 over 3. That simple. Yeah. So now, what if I had, let me make this a little bit more complicated. What if I had, I don't know, let's do 3 over square root of 4. It's not that much different, or it's really not. Exactly, because I want to get rid of the square root of 4, I have to multiply by something that equals 1, so I can multiply by square root of 4 over square root of 4. Oh my goodness, can I hit that line? There we go. Okay. So what's the bottom going to equal? 4. What's the top going to equal? I guess 12. Nope. Can they be combined into each other? When you multiply the three and the yes, square. but the way they get combined is kind of the same way you you would combine three times x to be three x. Oh, so it'd be the little three. So it would four. be three times like the and then the square root of four. Yep. Three times three. Three times three. Oh. So it's really not that different. You're just you're Wait, just kind of putting them together. Is it three times four? Or is it's it's three it's technically three, three times the square root of four. The way you would read it would be 3 square root of 4. So it's just the same thing as here. 3x is 3 times x, but you don't say it like that. You say 3x. So 3 square root of 4. They're technically multiplying because they're right next to each other, but it's, it's the same thing. 3x is 3 times x. No, you don't even need to write that. But I'm saying if you did that, it would still be correct. High school teachers are really, really weird about their formatting, so they might actually say that it's like, like this yeah. <laughs> well, because there, there's there's kind of proper ways that you do things in the math community, and things have to look a certain way. It's kind of like like this this whole thing. It's like there's technically nothing really wrong with this. It's just this is that's not how you're allowed to leave it. Same thing with like the negative exponents. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. You're just not allowed to leave it like that. Actually, I think they look ugly. And that's okay. All right, so let me write one for you guys to try on your own. Let's do 5 over the square root of 7. Go ahead and try that one. All right, what do I want to multiply him by? Absolutely. What's the bottom? Seven. Seven. What's the top? Five, Five square root of seven. That's it. Yeah. How do we feel with this? Yeah. Not too bad? Okay. Cool. Um, if you have not already, grab graph paper. Time to destroy your confidence. Uh, oh, can I erase this? Yeah. Okay. That's <laughs> debatable whether or not It's actually not that bad. It's just the fact that it's new, it will scare you. Really? Oh, are they? 
I was talking to um, Ms. Conrad on the other campus because it's been kind of happy. She says it's just like a white place. Really? Yeah. The ones that I looked at and the ones that my dad's working for. But this yeah. is a, like a mini one. So it's like. Yeah. It's literally that size. Maybe like, it's a little bit. Yeah. Like the size of the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think I'll project graph paper. It's probably the easiest way. Did we have enough graph paper? Yeah. Because I used a bunch for, with my seventh graders. Those are graphs. Hey, we cleaned them too. And you guys cleaned them. Yeah, we're so nice. Eh. <laughs> you were bored, that was why. <laughs> no, I probably would have done it anyway. I thought you wouldn't have Jared. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It wasn't because I was bored, it's because I didn't want to do anything. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. So now we get to look at how different um, exponents kind of will change a graph. We've done this like a smidge before. So we're just going to start with the base equation. Y equals X. That's a nice linear equation. So what kind of shape are we expecting? Just like a line. We're expecting a line because this is linear. So if you don't know, it's just like right off the top of your head, I'll graph this. Oh, we start with a T table. So we're going to be doing negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. We're going to use those numbers. So it's not negative 0, sad. 0 is neither negative nor positive. So if I put in negative 2 for x, what do I get for y? Negative 2. Negative 2? Okay, put that on your graph. Negative 2, negative 2. What about negative one? Negative one. Negative one. Negative one. Whatever is the input is the output. Ah, whatever's the input is the output. So zero gives us zero, one gives us one, two gives us two. So I have a point at zero, zero, a point at one, one, and a point at two, two. And obviously this goes on for forever. So you can draw yourself a nice little line. So from a nice linear equation, we'd expect a nice linear graph. So this is the kind that we're fairly familiar with. But what if this equation is x squared? So I put in negative 2. Negative 2 times a negative 2. Four. 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 Positive four, right? So I put in a negative two, and I'm going to get positive four. Yay. What if I put in negative one? So it's negative one times negative one. 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 You can't really graph imaginary no. numbers. So at negative 1, I have 1. What about 0? Zero? 0 squared? Zero. It's 0. So I have a point at 0, 0. What about 1? It's 1. 1 squared is 1. So we got a point at 1, 1. And what about 2? Four. 4. So I have a point at 2, 4. Does anyone know the name of this? Uh, Isn't it called something like a parabola? It is a parabola. So your, your x squared sort of graphs are a nice parabola. And they actually are really more curved at the bottom than than a V. People always draw it like that because they're just connecting dots. It really is more curved.
So if you're dealing with any sort of equation that has an x squared, you're going to be expected to get a parabola. Parabola. It might be shifted down, shifted over, depending on what's being added, subtracted, all that other stuff. But if you're having an x squared, you're going to get a parabola shape. That's what you should expect. What if I had x cubed? So if I put in negative 2, negative 2 times itself 3 times negative 8. So we have a point at negative 2, negative 8, negative 2, negative 1, 2. Oh my goodness, mine's like right at the bottom here. Might need to change like it to be that every square is two or something like that then. What about negative one? Is negative one? So at negative one I have a negative one. What about zero? Zero. zero. One. 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 one times itself three times is one, so we have a point at one, one. Two? Eight. Eight. Two times two times two is eight. So we have a point at two up one, two. Goodness, all the way up here. So the general shape that you're looking for if you have an x cubed, regardless of what's being added, subtracted, all that extra stuff, it's actually kind of like this weird sort of like S looking thing. So it like goes to zero. It's like two bananas. <laughs> I was thinking like for some reason it looks like an S to me, even though it's it's not really an ass, it's just, it, wow. I don't know, it, maybe just the curviness of it, it uh, just makes me think of an S. Kind of reminds me of the Safeway symbol. The Safeway symbol? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, regardless of if it's like x cubed plus 5 or whatever, it might be shifted over, shifted up, shifted down, but you, you're going to have this sort of curviness thing going on. Okay. Oh, okay. I don't like how you laugh at that. Oh. Uh. What if I had the square root of x, which we now know is the same as x to a half? You might want to use your calculators for these. Number. The solution is a number. So someone, each, each person choose a, a different um, number to use essentially. So if we do negative 2 square root that, yeah? I got a negative 9.414. I probably did it wrong. You should have a number. Can we have a negative in that square root? Yeah. Didn't we just learn that that's isn't an, that imaginary, it's an imaginary number? Oh, yeah. You can't graph imaginary numbers. So you, you can't even do that one. Same thing with negative 1. Nope. We can't even put in anything for it. You can't graph that imaginary number. Graph zero. zero, though, we can graph. Because <laughs> what times itself gives you zero? Zero. zero? zero. Square root of zero is zero. So we do have a point at zero, zero. Yay, Yay for us. What about one? one? Square root of one is one. Good. And I'm actually going to put in one more point just so we can. What about square root of 2? Anyone got that? 1.4. So at 2, we're at like 1.4. What about 4? Square root of 4. It's the curvy line shape, like the banana. 
but it's only on one side. So the general shape that you end up getting, and it's very shallow, is kind of just this, this like, because it it's very, very shallow, and it's, it, it's only positive. You can't have anything on the negative side. Because then we're getting into the negative realm. So with graphing the square root of x, you're kind of getting this, it's like this little bump, and then it just keeps going. Oh, wait. Because it's going to go up very, very slowly. Like, think if we, if we want to even get this line to go up to 3, we need to be at 9 for x. Or if you want to get it to 4, you need to be at 16 for x. Right? Because we're doing square roots. Yeah, Bless you. you. see it's a slope right there. But it's, it's not linear, so you don't have a consistent slope. All right. Last one. Do you remember what that is? Absolute value. Absolute value. So what if we want to graph the absolute value of x? 2, 1, I'm going to say 0, 1, and 2. Yes, because our general rule with absolute value is that if it's negative, you make it positive. If it's positive, you keep it positive. Because absolute value just says, how far is it from 0? So negative 2 is 2 spaces from 0. Negative 1 is 1 space from 0. 0 is 0 spaces from 0. So let's put in those points. So negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1, 0. It is a V. It's an exact V. So it's kind of similar to that linear equation, except that it like breaks itself in the middle. So this one is a true V. So again, and it might be shifted up, down, left, right if we have like absolute value of x plus whatever, but you're going to have something like this. How do we feel about these weird graphs? Square root x. Um, so what's confusing about that? All of it. All of it? Okay. So let's touch base on the square root of x again. Oh, you mean the, the, the thingy thing? Um, are you confused on how we got our numbers? Yeah. Okay. Let me shift this over. Okay. So going back to square root of x. So and we and remember when you're making your t table, you can choose whatever numbers you want. So do you understand why we can't do negatives? Okay. So remember if I put in like if I put in choose to do like the square root of negative four. You can't do that, right? There's no two numbers multiplied together that give you a negative. So it's an imaginary number, and you can't graph imaginary numbers. So, so we can't have any points in the negative realm for x. So your starting point is probably going to want to be 0. If we square root 0, what is that? 0. So we're starting at 0. Now you can't, so since you get to choose what values you want for x, and we're dealing with square root, I would choose things that square root very nicely. So 1, 4, 9, 16. So you can get whole numbers going on. So square root of 1, we got 2. Square root of 4, you get 2. Square root of 9, you get 3. Square root of 16, you get 4. So when it comes time for a test and you don't remember what shape it's supposed to look like, just do a t-table. And as you start putting on some points, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, it looks like this. So we got 1, 1. We got 4, 2. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Is that 3? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Is that 4? So you can see it kind of goes up kind of quickly, but then it kind of just levels out. Okay. But we can't be negative. You okay with it now? Okay. So we, we feel okay with the, the weird graphs? I just wanted to expose them to you.
I don't expect you to memorize them. Um, that's really tough. Just always go to a T table. You get to choose what numbers you want. And then as you're starting to see the shape, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, it's gonna look like this. But I just wanted you to recognize that those are possibilities so that when you're graphing things, you start getting stuff like that, you don't freak out. Okay. I actually just have one more thing. Oh, I guess I can turn this off. Exponential growth. Do we still need the graph? You do not need the graph. No. So this is when you're talking about things increasing, not at a nice little linear rate, at a explosive rate. So you're talking about germs multiplying. You're talking about the zombie apocalypse. Like, you're talking about things where it's not going to be this steady little, like, oh, a couple more. It's going to increase dramatically. So we're just going to work through a problem. <coughs> and we're going to start with rabbits, because they definitely have exponential growth. So, Rob has 30 rabbits, and the amount of rabbits doubles every year. So, if I'm going to solve something like this, I'm going to want to do a table. So, we're going to do the year, and we're going to do number of rabbits. So our starting point is 30. After one year, how many rabbits does he have? 60. 60. After two years, how many does he have? 120. After three years, 240. Go ahead and fill in the rest of these. It's a lot of rabbits. That's fine, use your calculator. So, how many after four years? Oh, uh, three. <laughs> What's 240 times two? 480. 480. <laughs> after five well years? 960. 960. After well six years? 1920. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so in just six years, he can have 1,920 rabbits, starting from 30. Okay, so that's exponential growth. So another reason, like, why you kind of think of it as exponential growth is that if you were to graph this, it's going to have that exponential sort of, uh, sure, shape, right? <laughs> So anytime you see kind of this sort of shape, that's your exponential sort of graph because you have exponential growth. It's starting out kind of slow, and then it's like, oh my god, stuff stuff's happening. You have sure you have a billion bananas. Okay. So what if I want to know what without doing a lot of work and going through this so many, so many times, what if I want to know how many he's going to have after 25 years? 
It wouldn't be nice if we have an equation, right? Yeah. That we can just plug that 25 into and work from this. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna figure out what that equation is. So what we need to do is figure out what I multiply by 30 to get to these numbers. So what am I multiplying by 30 here? Two. Two. Well, no, to get 30. Oh, oh zero. One. One. What am I multiplying 30 by here? Two. What am I multiplying 30 by here? Four. Is it by three? Four. It's four. Anyway, I was right. It is four. Eight. Might need to use your calculator. What is it here? Eight. 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 Sixteen. Sixteen. 32, 32, So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a little hint here because I this is not something you guys are used to looking for. What we're essentially doing is I'm taking 30 and then I'm going to multiply it by 2 to the power of whatever year it is. Ooh, I like that. So like down here for 4, I'm doing 30 times 2 to the 4th power. Or 6, I'm doing 30 times 2 to the 6th power. So we can think of there's this general rule of 30 times 2 to the t power, where t is whatever amount of years. Wait, wouldn't t be years? Yeah. Why would it be number of rabbits? Why is number of rabbits? So why did you put, why, that should be, why, but why did you do that? If you want to do like r equals 30 times 2 to a y for years, whatever. Do, okay. do your thing. Uh, now, where, why, why do I have a 30 in this equation? Where's that 30 come from? It's our starting point. So we have a starting point of 30. Why is it times 2? Because that's how many rabbits are multiplying. Yeah, because we're, we're, we're doubling every year. So if it was tripling every year, then it would be times 3 to a t. Or if it was quadrupling every year, right? What's 6? 6 is like... I don't know. 6 is... I don't know. Okay. So now we can actually solve it. If I want to know after 25 years, we just need to put that in. Y equals 30 times 2 to a 25 power. Someone, actually, all of you, figure that out for me. Okay. Someone else back that up? Lily, what did you get? Okay, so I've got. So it's 3, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 5, 4, 7, 2, 0. Okay, we're getting two different answers. Someone help, someone help. Which one is it? Wait, what was yours again? I got 82,750. I got way too big of a number. Yeah, I got like... I got like... <laughs> I got like 10 million. Well, it, no, yeah, I'm here. Wait, what'd you get? I got like, like 3, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 5, 4, 7, 20. Seven twenty p. Let me let me check. I think it's like ten billion or ten million. Let's see. So you would do two to One the twenty fifth power, and then we would times that by thirty. Six million is six. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay, that's a really big number. So I'm getting. I'm getting. My goodness, this is a big one zero zero six six three two nine six zero. So that's one billion six million six hundred and thirty two thousand nine hundred and sixty rabbits after just twenty five years. Dang, that's a lot of pixels. Okay. So you guys can see. You guys can see that if you can whittle it down to a equation. Obviously, because if you had to do this by table, oh my god, that'd be so annoying. Okay, so if you're dealing with exponential growth and you're trying to write an equation from it, that t is going to be in the exponents because it's exponential growth. So it makes sense. But you can always go from the table aspect.
There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Just want to show you this. How do we feel about exponential growth? I feel really good. good. So you can always do table if you're not feeling comfortable with this. But if you're dealing with really big numbers, this is nice. Wait, why is uh, for the for zero the year mm -hmm. zero? Why is it uh, why would it be one? Because because it's two to the zero power. And remember, our exponent rule of anything to a zero power is one. Oh, okay. I hate that rule. But it comes in handy, right? Because actually, that's normally why people get always like a little weirded out when they're trying to write an equation because we're so stuck with our starting point. But realize, like, it's okay to multiply things by one, so it's just whatever number you want to multiply by to the zero power. So it's actually a nice little rule.